Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <coughs> Amen. Amen. We have two texts this morning. The first is picks up the theme for this Advent season. In the second chapter of Matthew, beginning with verse 1, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then the second text, the main one which I'll be speaking on this morning, is from the 8th chapter of Romans, beginning with verse 18. Consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage <coughs> to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who, have, who are the, have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? For if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. Go by the text. Dear friends and co workers in Christ, what do you think of when you think of the Magi or kings coming to Jerusalem following the stock? Nancy, driving back yesterday from our visit to Carl, uh, saw what she thinks is a, a comet. And it was moving across the star, the sky, yesterday. Is that what you think of? Think of the Magi and the lumbering camels going across great expanse of territory, <coughs> finally coming to that Bethlehem, major, uh, not a manger, because he was about two years of age at that time, uh, to this house in, in Jerusalem, uh, or Bethlehem. Is that what you think of? Uh, to really understand this, we have to go back some 600 years to the prophecy that was given already to Moses, and was then carried by the leaders of Judah as they were taken captive and brought over to Babylon. And for 500 to 600 years, these uh, promises of God, of a star and a ruler, were kept alive there in Babylon until finally this star appears in the sky and these wise men followed it. Now, what was this period? This was a time of great trouble and difficulty, groaning in Israel. You studied this as you studied Habakkuk, and you see it with Jeremiah. Great difficulty. How could God do this to our nation as we're trying to follow God? And not all of this finally comes to fruition as the star appears and the Magi follow it they finally fall down to worship the Christ style. We're in our family, and you as a church, is going through a troubling time right now. And God has given a promise to us. And it's in this promise that we believe and we're living. And that's what we want to talk about this morning in this time of groaning. Our topic is freedom from groaning. Our text today talks about this to begin with. It says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning 
as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. In another place, uh, we have the first fruit of the Spirit. We, we groan inwardly. All creation is groaning. I see this. I'm from Montana. Uh, we know that we can go for miles and see the fir trees gradually dying. Some of them because of a fungus. Some of them because of the beetles. <coughs> but they're all brown. Gradually they die. They fall to the ground and rot. Nation, nature is groaning. We know that the bees have developed a fungus. And by the millions they're dying. All kinds of farmers that had beehives are going out of business because their bees are mysteriously dying from this fungus. Nature is growing. Groaning. We see this in some of the deer out in <coughs> western Montana. For some reason, the white-tailed deer are dying. We don't know exactly why. We see it with the bison. The bison had this brucellaris disease, which causes them to abort. And they're trying to develop a pure stock where it does not have this, but so far it's a great difficulty and there's a struggle. Nature is groaning. We see this in a variety of different ways, but uh, some of it's caused by us humans. We have the fish. The government has decided that the cutthroat trout are the native trout in our area. And the rainbow trout are eating them, uh, the eggs and so on. And so they have decided to poison all kinds of streams in our areas to kill off the rainbow trout so that the cutthroat trout can survive. All of the hand of humans. All, all of nature is groaning. But the worst of all is human beings. Look at the far uh, near east, where thousands upon thousands of people are being killed because of government unrest over there in Syria and Egypt. People are groaning, <coughs> groaning due often to our misconduct. We have this now in our family. I came here to this wonderful place in California uh, for a period of respite. My wife was diagnosed with cancer one year ago last sun Sunday. So I wanted to get out of the area there in Montana where she was struggling at that time in order to have a respite, a rest for my groaning. And what did I walk into? A new groaning. Another struggle. Another difficulty. That's the way it is. There's groaning all over the place amongst nature and amongst human beings. And what's the answer to this? God has given us the answer. You look into the Old Testament, book of Isaiah, In Isaiah, uh, how do I get here? Promise in chapter 65, Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem to take a delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. What a wonderful promise that God gives us. And this is repeated then in the book of Revelation, where he tells us, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, 
prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. That's the promise that we hold on to. I still have an image of my, in my mind of my wife struggling towards the end, struggling to get breath, finally getting very pale, and no more breath. Being at her bedside, that's very vivid to me. And what a wonderful promise. I know that's not the end. There's something more glorious, more beautiful. She's already enjoying it. I'm a little jealous about it, to be honest. Uh, and I wonder, how come? In our family, the guys always died first. How come? But God has his answer. And the hope is there for all of us. The sting of death is taken away through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. And that's the ultimate hope, the glorious hope that we have in front of all of us. And that's the faith that we live by. And that's the first part of the message this morning. The ultimate beauty and glory of a new life that's in store for all of us through Jesus Christ and the mansions that he's prepared for us. But that's only part of it. We're still left here. You're joined with me. Living in this world of groaning and travel and disruption and <clears throat> sin. What's the answer while we're still here? Is it just a hope in the future? No, God's right with us now. He gives us hope and faith and something beautiful and <clears throat> wonderful right here and now in our life. And that's what Jesus came to tell us about. When he was here, he preached that Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the, even when people are troubling you, when people are persecuting you. For great is your reward in heaven. And this is the kingdom of God that he was speaking about. So he, right here and now, is with us. He tells us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. His promise that he's with us right here and now in our struggles, in our groaning, in our difficulties, in all the diff problems that we have as human beings. Just a couple of passages that really speak to me in this, uh, in the Bible. One is that wonderful story in John 4 of, of the woman at the well. She came, she was a troubled woman. She had five husbands, and the one she was living with at the present time wasn't her husband. So she was ostracized by the other women. Not a very pleasant situation. So she came in the middle of the day, whereas most women came early morning and evening. Middle of the day, came with her pot, and there was Jesus. Strikes up a conversation with her. And now, Jesus broke all the rules. He had a way of doing that. Uh, first of all, was a woman. Men just didn't speak to women in those days. On top of that, she was not just a woman. She was a Samaritan woman. They were the heretics of that day. You certainly didn't associate with them. Jews didn't even go through their territory. They bypassed it, took another route in order to go up to Galilee or between Judah and Galilee. And on top of that, she was not a very honorable woman because of her background. But Jesus strikes up a conversation with her, typical Jesus, and talks of, you're looking for water, I'll tell you about living water, which is and their culture was running water. And I'll tell you about this living water. And more than that, finally reveals to her that he is the Messiah. She gets so excited 
She leaves her pot there at the well, runs off to her belly, telling everybody, I found the Messiah. 